Good morning. Today is February 28th. This is Pastor Brown from Berean Bible Fellowship coming to you with today's class, The Rapture and Future Prophecy. Many people today uh, are a little confused about the rapture and the second coming of Christ. There are many verses in the Bible that, if not correctly interpreted, can offer uh, confusion for people as to when the rapture is going to happen, whether it's going to happen before the tribulation period, during the tribulation period, or after the tribulation period. We're going to attempt today to sit there and to view some of these scriptures and see if what the Bible says about when things are going to happen and when these these time period, the tribulation period, who this time is for. If you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 17, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are in our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now the Christian church through, through the scriptures for centuries has taught that the doctrine of the rapture that one day Jesus Christ will return and remove his church or what is known as the body of Christ. There are several different schools of thought on, on this. The first school of thought is pre-tribulation. Those who believe that the next prophetic event is the rapture and that the church or the body of Christ will be spared from going through the tribulation period. Now this happens to be the belief that I hold that the church is not meant to go through the, the tribulation period and we will be spared. Next you have mid-tribulation. And that's those who believe that the church will not be raptured until halfway through the tribulation period. And last you have post-tribulation. Those who believe that the church won't be raptured until the end of the tribulation period. The basis for their belief is Matthew 24, 3. And we're going to go through that in a little bit. So, what is the truth? What does the scripture teach concerning this? Who is the seven year tribulation period for? In today's sermon, we will address these questions and also look at, the, look at future prophecy and dissect who's, who these messages are directed to. Whenever you're interpreting scripture, one of the most important things, you need to know who the writer was speaking to. Who was, the, who was this message for? So, in order to understand future prophecy, we must always start with who are these messages directed to. When, in, when interpreting scripture, it is common, a common and well-known practice to look at, one, again, who is, who, who is writing the book? Second, who is the writer speaking to? We must keep in mind while we are looking at verses today. Those who don't interpret scripture by using dispensations will often confuse the, the nation of Israel with the church. God first cut out a people for himself and formed a nation unto itself. God made certain covenants or agreements with the nation of Israel. And while God was dealing with Israel, the church did not exist. Many people not understanding the difference between the church and the nation will confuse the message. Let's take a look at such, ver uh, such a verse. You turn to Matthew 24, 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So here Jesus Christ is talking to his disciples, his apostles, and they're asking him, when will, you, when will you be coming back? So they weren't asking him when the rapture was. They were asking him, 
when will you return? They were, they were, uh, the church had not yet been revealed, so they cannot ask about something that they have no knowledge of. And with it not being revealed, not being revealed in Scripture, the church was the mystery. Christ had never, had never revealed in Old Testament Scriptures that he would go to the Gentiles and have them doing the job that the nation of Israel was intended to do. And we'll, we'll look at that a little bit closer a little later. So, what was being asked here? So, how could they be talking about the rapture, the church, had not yet been created or revealed? So the question that they asked about when, was the, when will Christ return and when was the end of the age, th these were questions about the thousand year reign of Christ. When would he rule here on earth? And this is what this is what was prophesied to Israel that the king the, the king would come through the line of David, the Messiah, and that he would reign here on earth a thousand years. So this was the question that they were asking. And it was an appropriate question for the time and an appropriate question to be asked by a Jew. And if we remember, the Jews asked Christ, When when will you when will you overthrow the Roman Empire? When will you set up your kingdom? This is exactly what they were talking about. And when they asked him, when, when are you coming back? This is the time period that they were asking about. So let's take a look at, the, uh, at Matthew 24, <coughs> 4 through 35. And we're going to break it up and we'll talk about it as we go along. So in Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Now, if we look at how things are today, we see that there's earthquakes, there's wars and rumors of wars, there's people who, who claim to be the Messiah, there's uh, uh, John Koresh, who claimed, to be, who claimed to be Jesus Christ. So these things are going on now, but is, are these the signs that Christ was, was he talking to us? Was he talking to the modern day church? Let's go on a little bit. In verse 9 it says, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time many will turn away from the faith, and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now this is a verse that the post-tribbers ha hang their hat on, saying that you must endure to the end. So they believe that this is the tribulation period, and on that they're correct. This is the tribulation period that's being talked about. He's not talking about now. These are not signs for, the, for us right now to be looking for, for Christ to be raptured. These are signs of the people who are in the tribulation period to know that the end of the tribulation period is coming. And in verse 14 it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Paul said that if anyone is to preach any other, uh, any other gospel than he preaches, they are to be condemned. This Kingdom gospel is not the same gospel that is preached right now. We are now in the church age, the age of grace. We are not in the, the kingdom, the time of the kingdom gospel. The time of the kingdom was when Christ was here on earth, and it, the kingdom was being offered. And if you look through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, many times he says the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom was being offered. But Israel rejected the kingdom. They rejected their king. They rejected the Messiah. So when we look at verse 15, it says, 
So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Now, who was prophet, the prophet Daniel prophesying to? He was prophesying to the Jew. This is a message to the Jew. And if we look who, the, who Christ, who was speaking, who was he speaking to? He was speaking to the Jews. Many people are misled by looking at these verses, thinking that this was written to the church. But let's remember, the church was not revealed. They didn't know of the church. Now, Christ did, but the apostles did not. So here, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Where is Judea? Judea is in Israel. It's, it's in Israel. This is part of, this is the Jews. Again, message to the Jews. Let no, let no one on their housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. He's saying that these times will be so horrendous that don't go back to get your goods. Flee, because you will be hunted, and you're going to have to endure to the end. And what endure to the end means that here in the tribulation period, when you are condemned permanently if you receive the mark of the beast, so he's telling you that you must endure to the end. You must not receive the mark. If you receive the mark, you are now identified with Satan. And there is no salvation after that. So salvation is different during the tribulation period. And there will be people who are saved during the, during the tribulation period. But they're not the modern day church. Those are people after the rapture who believe. You have family members who you've been witnessing to, who you've been trying to get to accept, accept the gospel, but they, they, they're stiff-necked and they don't want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But they have the knowledge. You've talked to them over and over. And when Jesus Christ comes back and he raptures his church, then they open their eyes and they say, oh my goodness, I've made a mistake. So then they, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and just as we, they're now saved. The only difference is, now they have to endure to the end. They have to not receive the mark, because if they receive the mark, they are not saved. Okay, so then when we look at 19, verse 19, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. So we look at things now and we say how horrible things are now. This is nothing compared to how horrible things are going to be when God is pouring out his wrath upon, upon the world. This tribulation period, it is, it, was, it is for the nation of Israel. It is to refine them and bring them to the point where they will accept the Messiah. So, we look at verse 22, it says, if, in those days, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Now, these are, the, these are people who believe during, during the tribulation period, the elect. And this is who he's talking about, saying if, if these days were not shortened, if these days were not cut short, that not even the elect could withstand the wrath of God for a long period of time, that they too would sit there and accept the mark. So he's saying that he cuts for for the elect. Excuse me, for the sake of the elect, these days are are cut short. And verse twenty three says, and at time if anyone says to you, look here is the Messiah or there he is, do not believe it, for the false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And again, he's saying that, that these people will deceive, and even the elect would be deceived if days were not, were not cut short. And in 25, it says, says, See, I have told you ahead of time. So if you're in this time, and you hear they're saying, The Messiah is here. Don't believe them. The Muslims have the Mahdi, the Mahdi is, in, in the Muslims, the story that the Muslims tell is the direct opposite of what the Bible tells. We both tell of a great war that's going to happen, but the, but the Muslims tell it from the other side. There's going to be a great war, and they're going to overcome through this war. 
We tell that the, 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 above, of the great war and that the Jews are going to be persecuted and Christ is going to rescue uh, the nation of Israel in the end. So it's the same story told from two different views. And, and their Mahdi, their one who's coming to, to save them, is what we call the Antichrist. So in verse 26 it says, So if anyone tells you that he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the, the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. There will be no doubt when the, when the second coming of Christ uh, is. The nation of Israel will be surrounded by its enemies, and two-thirds of them will have been destroyed. One-third remnant will remain, and Christ will, Christ will rescue them. And in verse 30 it says, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trump, trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. So at this point, when Jesus Christ is coming back at the end of the tribulation period, then he will gather all the elect because they're out hiding, hiding in the woods, hiding in caves, hiding from being captured and being trying to be forced to put to take the mark or ha or be beheaded. These, this is what is, is in store for those who are going through the tribulation period. So he, at, at the end, he will gather them all together. And in verse 32, it says, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as the twigs get tender and the leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it, that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So Christ is telling you this is going to happen. These are the signs of the end, the end, end times, the end of the tribulation period, not the rapture. The rapture is the removal of the church. And as we said, in order to understand the rapture, the tribulation period, you must understand that this was, is a message to the Jews that are alive during the tribulation period, heading into the millennial reign of Christ. But how can we be sure that this time is for the church? To properly understand the tribulation period, you must understand Daniel's 70th week. And in Daniel 9.24, it says, Seventy weeks are determined unto thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. God has made certain promises to Israel. Israel was given 490 years, what they call 70 weeks, one week is seventy years is seven years. Seventy weeks comes out to four hundred and ninety years. So they were given four hundred and ninety years to bring the end to sin and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to bring in the the, the Lord our Lord our Savior Christ, and to seal up the vision and prophecy. So all all promises that were made to Israel God always keeps his word. He always fulfills his promises. So this, this is what this time is appointed for. When, when Israel rejected Christ, 69 weeks had passed. There's one week remaining. The time of Israel was put on hold because they rejected their Messiah. John the Baptist was, was, was baptizing people, announcing that the, the Messiah was here. In John 1.31, he says, so that, so that 
so that the Messiah would be made manifest to Israel, this is why I come baptizing with water. He was announcing this, the, the Messiah, that the Messiah is here. But Israel did not want to accept him. So when the nation of Israel formally rejected Christ, this, this occurred at the 69th week. Thus, one week being seven years. And those seven years are what remains in the tribulation period. This is where the church began, and the church now performs the duties that the nation of Israel was meant to do. What, is, what was that mission? When, when we say that Israel was the chosen, pe the chosen people of God, what were they chosen for? If you look at the Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6, it says, Now therefore, if ye will, will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So Israel was, cho was chosen by God and, sec and separated out to be a kingdom of priests so that they would carry God's word to the, to the Gentiles. But Israel isn't doing that. How many Jews do you know that a proselytize? Do Jews go out and preach their, their understanding of the truth to, to the Gentiles or to other people or no? Or do you have to be born a Jew or marry into being a Jew? They are not spreading the gospel. They are not spreading the word. Now, Masonic Jews, those that, be have, that believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, they are uh, preaching the gospel. But the entire nation of Israel is not Masonic Jews. Not yet. So, it was Israel's purpose to carry the gospel of Christ. But when they rejected Christ, this is when God went to the Gentiles. And the church now preaches the gospel. So what message does God give to the church? What signs does he tell us to look for? Signs were always meant for the nation of Israel, not for the church. But what are we told? And if we turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 through 10, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves no know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. In other words, there will be no warning. He will come as a thief in the night, in the twinkling of an eye. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let, not, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the and helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. The key verse here is that God has not appointed us to wrath. This means that we will not go through the tribulation. This time is not for us. It, if, it, it, if it's not for us, then who is it for? If we turn to the book of Jeremiah, verse 30, chapter 30, verse 7, it speaks of this time, the tribulation, and it says, How awful that day will be! No other will be like it, and it will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. This verse clearly states that the awful day, this time of trouble, is for Jacob. Jacob, as we know, was renamed Israel. Out of Jacob came the nation of Israel. This tribulation period is a time 
that God will deal with the nation of Israel and he will bring them back to him at the end. The nation of Israel will accept Jesus as the Messiah and they will realize <coughs> that they crucified their Lord. And if we look in Zechariah 13, 6, it says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. And he is talking about the Jews, saying that the Jews were the ones who crucified him. And this is how he received these wounds. And in Zechariah 13, 8 through 9, it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So he is saying that two-thirds of the nation of Israel, when they're going through the tribulation period, two-thirds will be killed. One-third will be the remnant that, is, that remains. And in verse 9, it says, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. So here he's saying that, 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 that one-third that is left in one day, the whole nation of Israel will accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. This, this verse describes the Jewish remnant, that God will bring them through the tribulation period and this one-third remaining of the nation of Israel will believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. This is the end when Jesus Christ returns with his army of saints. Let's look at some verses that support this. And who are those saints? Those saints are the church that have been, ra that have been raptured up have been through the, the judgment seat of Christ, have received their resurrection bodies, and, and are, are riding behind Christ. So in Zechariah, oh, so this verse, this verse clearly shows that the saints will be with Christ in his army at the second coming. And where the earth enters into the millennial reign of Christ. If we go to Zechariah 14, 5, and 9, and it says, And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judea. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And the Lord shall shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. So, we have made our case today and shown that it is not God's, it's not God's plan for the church to go through the tribulation period. That time is for God to prepare Israel to accept the Messiah. So in a twinkling of an eye, the rapture will happen and the church will vanish the question is, are you ready for this? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in, the, in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. This is what you must believe to be saved. If you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, here is your opportunity. Right here where you are right now, bow your head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner, and I know that your Son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross to pay for the sins of the world. And when he was on the cross, he had my personal sins upon him. I believe he died and rose three days later, and now sits at the right hand of the Father in glory. I accept your invitation, and by grace, the free gift of salvation. 
Amen. Now, if you prayed this prayer, you're now saved. Feel free to join us weekly on YouTube or join us at Brian Bible Fellowship, 550 Warren Street, Apartment 10A, Fayetteville, New York.